Good Samaritan who stopped a man from attacking a woman on a city bus now be charged with murder. Will a possible Roe versus Wade reversal impact young voters? We talked to college students and an expert about that impact. Plus, does the U.S. Supreme Court really get the final say when it comes to abortion rights? We verify. Meet some local Korean American women who are embracing and fiercely celebrating their culture and their womanhood. Top Gun Maverick launches from the USS Midway. I'm Carla Chiquetto on the red carpet where we're talking to the stars. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A twist of events on an MTS bus. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carlo Chiquetto. A rider who helped a woman who was being attacked on a city bus is in jail right now. He's facing possible murder charges, but CBS 8's Anna Laurel just found out that could soon change. That's right. This afternoon, we were expecting Edward Hilbert to be arraigned in court. He's being held for murder charges, but that didn't happen. I spoke with a defense attorney today who says the district attorney is being extra cautious because the details of this case are so unusual. They need to play up the fact that that guy was trouncing on this woman, beating her. The rest of the people, you know, were alarmed by it and were waiting for someone to step in. Defense attorney Gretchen Von Helms is not an attorney on this case, but she is surprised about what happened on a city bus this weekend. A male uh, that ultimately died, the decedent in this case, got into a disturbance with a female that was on the bus. Um, that disturbance became violent. Several other passengers on the bus uh, interceded, ended up uh, restraining the male. A police statement I received this afternoon says Edward Hilbert held Anthony McGaff down to stop him from attacking a woman on the bus. McGaff became unconscious and eventually died. Police then arrested Hilbert for murder. To charge someone, all you need is a little bit of evidence. To convict someone, you need a whole bunch of evidence. Von Helm says prosecutors only want to charge cases they think they can prove to a jury. In this case, the answer may not be so clear. But if he was a typical Good Samaritan and was just trying to get the guy off of the woman, I think that the jury is really going to be understanding of that. We don't know what started the whole thing on the bus Saturday night. We don't know the history of either man or the woman involved. We do know that tonight, San Diego prosecutors are looking at all of the evidence before they decide what to do about Hilbert. I have never seen in San Diego a Good Samaritan charged with murder. That's very unusual. In San Diego, Anna Laurel, CBS 8. And just moments ago, the district attorney's office told Anna Edward Hilbert will be released from jail. They say the case remains under review and there's no timeline for when that will be done. 28-year-old Raul Marquez pleaded not guilty today in the murder of 67-year-old Floyd Budd. Investigators say officers found Bud stabbed to death in his home on Bowdoin Avenue in Claremont early Monday morning. They say Marquez was standing in Bud's driveway holding a knife with blood all over his clothes when they arrived. As the debate over abortion rights heats up, some political analysts think the issue might mobilize younger voters to show up to the polls. Midterm elections typically see lower numbers overall, but some San Diego college students hope to change that. CBS 8's Heather Hope is live in downtown at the Hall of Justice, where a rally for women's rights is just starting. We're seeing the action behind you, Heather. Yes, more people are continuing to come. You can see them all lined up, mainly on the steps of the Hall of Justice here, all carrying their signs, listening to a song by the Isley Brothers called Fight the Power, and some signs saying pro row, all taking center at this large debate. Before this decision was leaked, we were looking at kind of a ho-hum election in 2022. Students I spoke with at San Diego State this afternoon say despite typical low voter turnout for midterm elections, they think the issue of Roe versus Wade hanging in the balance will make them fill out their ballots. Yeah, I definitely think that will happen. I think the more people are involved in advocating and just listening to the problem and issues, They'll definitely want to vote. UC San Diego professor of political science Thad Kowser says if the Supreme Court officially rules to overturn Roe versus Wade, the decision will likely bring out both pro-choice and pro-life voters to the primaries in June and to the general midterm election in November. Many of the, the pro-life voters have always been the, sort of the bedrock of the Republican base, always been galvanized by this issue and have turned out really regularly. Um, they tend to skew older. Kowser says many of the pro-choice voters and young 
young voters have been up or down in their turnout, according to recent polls. He says in addition to the California race for governor and seats for the San Diego City Council, County Board of Supervisors, and the school board, there are many propositions on the ballot that could be highly contested, including possibly a constitutional amendment that could protect abortion rights. But I think now young voters, female voters and, and young women especially see clearly the stakes. San Diego State students majoring in public health say they are discussing the issue over reproductive rights in class today. It's definitely fearful, you know, as a woman to think about if I was put in that position. At a pro-life rally held at SDSU late last week, senior Hannah Reynolds says she was shocked at the large turnout of students on campus on both sides of the debate. I've only gone here for two years, but it was more um, like support from the campus that I've seen for pretty much any issue. So you can hear the large chanting out here, and just like we saw the rally last night, we're seeing this one again tonight, and we'll have CBS 8's Richard Allen pick up the coverage at 10 and 11. Jesse Marcella. Thank you, Heather. Meantime, an investigation will soon start in Washington looking into the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion. Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed the document Political First reported on is authentic, but says it was a first draft and not a final opinion from the justices. President Joe Biden says more could be at stake if the justices do strike down the landmark ruling. What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history, in recent American history. Meanwhile, Democratic governors are vowing to protect or expand abortion rights in their states. But on the other hand, more than 20 GOP-led states have or are poised to pass anti-abortion legislation. Governor Gavin Newsom is criticizing the National Democratic Party tonight and urging people to vote in the midterm elections. Our political reporter Morgan Reiner has more on the governor's first public appearance since the Supreme Court's draft decision was leaked. Newsom thought the headline his staff handed him to read on Monday night was a joke. And I said, is this the onion? Is this actually happening? Is this true? He believes this will be a defining moment in the upcoming midterms above inflation, crime and other issues. Everything's built off that fundamental right, freedom. While he said the severity of the issue goes beyond an election, he admits he hopes it drives people to the polls. If this doesn't animate people to get involved, I sure as hell, I mean it. I don't know what the hell will. Political analyst Steve Swat said the midterm elections were predicted to be a slaughterhouse for Democrats. President Biden with just a 42 percent approval rating. Uh, but this decision has the potential to change the calculus, at least in those districts that are purple in the House and those states that are purple in the U uh, in the U.S. Senate elections. Uh, it is one issue that motivates and galvanates uh, voters. While California is a deep blue state, Swant said there could still be an impact here. There are some districts in Southern California, Orange County, for example, that are considered toss-ups. If the Democrats get motivated on this issue and turn out in those districts, it could make a difference. GOP strategist Rob Stutzman said the leaked draft will not impact California and that across the country there are more important issues on the forefront. Republicans have a clear advantage on at the moment moment are those kitchen table issues uh, related to uh, particularly inflation, high fuel costs. But agree that in purple states there's a potential for an impact. There's a lot of polling showing that young Democrat voters are moving away from the president. They're not confident in him. But we also know that younger voters uh, may be uh, more likely to come back to the party over this issue of, of abortion rights. And does the U.S. Supreme Court get the final say when it comes to abortion rights? We will verify coming up tonight in our second half hour. Law enforcement agencies across San Diego are taking a moment to remember the ones they've lost. Representatives and family members from the different offices got together at the County Administration Center for their annual memorial today. It's been my main goal for the last plus 20 years uh, to see that this ceremony is done. And as long as I can, I'll keep doing it. This is the first formal memorial ceremony in two years because of the pandemic. 